Hello and welcome to this ArtCam Express 2013 demonstration. What I'm going to be showing you today is how to create this picture or mirror frame for a child. And I'm going to be doing this using the basic version of ArtCam Express. So I'm not going to be using any of the modules for this. You can do this just using the base product. And here you can see what I'm going to be machining and producing. So to do this, the first thing that I'm going to do is just close this model, just so you can see the welcome screen when I open up ArtCam Express. If you take a look on the right hand side, you can see that I have none of the modules installed. So this is all going to be done just using the basic ArtCam Express. Now the first thing that I need to do is to create the vectors for the whale. Now that's because I don't have the vector tools or the bitmap layers modules and what I could do with these would just be to create the vectors and put them onto a different layer but I don't have that so I'm going to have to do this a different way. So if I open up this folder you can see here that I have this whale picture and what I'm going to do is bring that into ArtCam and basically get ArtCam to create the vectors for me. So let's just drag and drop that into ArtCam. And you can see that it's asked me to set the model size when I bring that into ArtCam. I can change the height in Z to zero because I don't want to create this in 3D for this piece. I just want to create some vectors or some lines for it. And I'm just going to use the default values for the height and the width and select OK. And you can see that that's opened up the image within ArtCam. Now if you take a look at this image, you can see that it's just a PNG file. You can use any types of images, just bring them into ArtCam. Now if you take a look at the image, you can see that it's this sort of pale blue colour and we have the darker colour. Now that's all the colours that I can see in there, but there are actually lots of different shades of colours. If you take a look down the bottom, on the colour palette, you can see we've got lots and lots of different shades of blues in there. Now what I'm going to do is get ArtCam to basically trace around one of the colours. I can't do that at the moment because I have too many colours and ArtCam would just trace around a certain colour and it wouldn't give me the desired effect. So what I need to do is reduce the colours down to a more manageable amount. So what I'm going to do is select here for reduce colours and straight away this reduces the colours down to 32 colours. So you can see it's already reduced the bottom down to 32. Now I'm just going to slide that right the way down to two colours. Now you can see when I bring that down to two colours that I lose the mouth and the eye of the whale. So I need to bring some colour back into this. So let's bring it back up to three colours and you can see that it gives me the lighter colour and the darker colour. And what's happened is that all of the different shades have merged into these two colours which are the main colours of this image. So I'm going to first of all OK that and what I need to do is just create a border around this. As you can see, this touches the edge of the model. So what I'm going to do is just add a little border to this, just so I've got a little bit of extra white space around the edge there. So what I'm going to do is right click on the white, just make sure that it's the secondary color. And in the drop down here, we have add border. And this allows me to add a border to this color. So I can do this symmetrical, top, bottom, left or right. I'm just going to do this symmetrical, let's say five millimeters, and then select OK. And you can see that it's added this border, this white border around the edge here. And you can see that the image is now lying 
off the edges of the model. Okay, so to create the vectors to trace around these, what we need to do is use the bitmap to vector tool. So if I select that, and basically this uses the color that you have selected as the primary color, as the color that ArtCam is going to trace around. So what I'm going to do is choose the darker color, and I'm going to select create vectors. Now if I drop the contrast slider bar down, you can see that it's created vectors all around the darker colors. Now, if I bring that contrast slider bar back up and just zoom in on the top spurts here, you can see that I have some of the lighter colors in with the darker colors. And when I create the vectors for the lighter colors, I'm going to get all of these vectors and it's not going to give me the desired effect because these two colors are not combined so what I'm going to do is just draw a box around the dark colors at the top now bear in mind the only reason that I've done this is to create the eye and the mouth so I'm not too concerned about this and I'm going to delete that now what I'm going to do is select the lighter color as the primary color and then right click on the darker color and it will become the secondary color. Now if I click this, this icon here, this will link the two colors together. So it will basically turn all of the darker color into the lighter color. So if I select that, you can see that it's turned basically the whole of the image into this lighter color. But I still have the vectors for my eye and the mouth, which is what I need. So I can create the vectors again now, drop the contrast slider bar down, and you can see that I have all of my vectors for this whale. Now if I just zoom in here, let's turn up the contrast slider bar, you can see that I've got quite jagged pixels on this image. And ArtCam's just given me this line that's going straight through there, and it's just blending all of these around. So it's not giving me all of the pixelation on the vector. So it's giving me some really nice vectors. I'm not going to edit these vectors. I'm just going to machine them. Okay, so what I'm going to do is export these out. Now, if I had the vector tools module, I could just send these to uh, another layer and just use them later. But what I'm going to do is just select all of them and I'm going to export these. And I'm going to export these to my children's frame express 2013 folder. I can export these as EPS files or DXF files if I wanted to. Let's just do it as an EPS file and I'll save that as whale. Select save and now these vectors are saved within that EPS file. So what I can do now is carry on with my design. And what I'm going to do is set up the model now because this is too small. It's only, if I click on untitled here, it's only 35 millimeters squared really. So this is way too small for a picture frame unless you're doing a really, really small one. So if I go to file and I'm going to go to new model and I'm going to create a new model that's 300 by 400 millimeters with a thickness of 25 millimeters. Now, if you want to work in inches, you can just select there and it will allow you to work in inches. You can also change the origin or the datum point. So at the moment, I've set it to the center. You can just click on one of the corners if you wished or have that in the center. So I'm going to select OK. I don't need to save the changes for this. And there you can see that that's created a new model that's 300 millimeters by 400. Now, if I go to the 3D view, I'm going to do this all within the 3D view. And I'm just going to turn off my material block so I don't need to see that. And I can rotate this 3D view around if I wished, or I could just take a plan view of this so I can basically draw on the plan view. 
So the first thing that I'm going to do is to import the vectors that I just created. So if I go to vectors and import, here you can see the whale EPS file that I just exported. So I'm going to open that up and you can see that it's imported my whale here. Now, as you can see, it was very small, so I need to resize this. And I do that by using the transform tool. So if I select here for transform, it opens up a dialog box, letting me change the width and the height of this. But I can also do this by using any of the red cursors that I have here. So what I'm going to do is just press Alt on the keyboard so it changes the size from the center. And I'm going to move that up to around about 125 millimeters like so now what I'm going to do is just select all of the vectors and I'm just going to move them down to the bottom of the model like so so that's the position that I'm going to put my whale within my design now what I'm going to do is create a couple of rectangles I'm going to create a rectangle by selecting the create rectangle tool and I'm going to snap to the edge of the model and then snap to the other edge of the model so it creates this rectangle. Now what I can do is offset this rectangle. So if I go to the offset vectors and I'm just going to do this real time basically. So let's just grab that and I'm going to offset it, let's say around about there, it's about 30 millimeters. And you can see that that's created an offset for me. Now, if I just close that for a moment, I'm just going to take a look at the whale. Now, if I select that, you can see that it selects all of the vectors, including the mouth and the eye. Now, I don't want this because I want to offset the outside of the whale. And if I offset that, it's going to offset the mouth and the eye. So what I'm going to do is to right click on the whale and I'm going to select to ungroup all. And that will ungroup all of the vectors. So you can see that they're all separate. Okay, so what I'm going to do is select all of them and then just shift select the mouth and the eye. And I'm going to group these together by selecting the group icon here. So you can see that these are grouped together. Now what I can do is offset these. So it's not going to offset the eye or the mouth. So if I go to the offset vectors tool, and what I'm going to do is just grab the outside and just offset that. So let's do it, let's say around about 20, like so, and then I can close that. Now I'm going to select the outside and shift select the rectangle. And what I need to do is basically trim all of this inside of the rectangle and the outside of the offset that I created. Now, I can do that using the trim tool, but a much easier way to do that is by using the trim vectors tool. And this trims both of the vectors against each other. So if I select that, what you'll see is that I've got that piece as a separate entity. So what I can do is just delete that. And then this piece is all one part. So it's all been joined together. Okay, so that's that bottom part done with for the moment. So I'm just going to go up to the top left and I'm going to create a circle here and I'm going to just snap onto the center there and let's do this, let's say 25 and then select create. And what I'm going to do with this is to use the trim tool. So if I trim this, now I could use auto join, but I want to show you how you can join the vectors up when you're doing it. So let's trim off the outside there, trim off the inside of that rectangle, and then I can close that. Now, if you take a look at this, you can see that I've got this arc here 
and I've got the rectangle. They're both different entities, so what I need to do is join them together. Now I can do that by selecting to join vectors with coincident nodes. So basically this just joins all of the vectors together. So here you can see it tells me that the number of vectors is two. The number of vectors after I do this is going to be one. So if I join that, now you can see that that's all one vector. So it's all one part. Now finally for the design, I want to create some waves down here. And I'm going to do this by creating a circle again. And I'm going to do this, let's say, around about there, let's say about 10 millimeters. Click Create. And I'm going to go into Node Editing. And I'm going to edit this. Now, if I right click on here, I can select Remove Span. So it's just going to get rid of that art there. Now the shortcut for that is R, so I can just get rid of that span and it leaves me with this half round. Now what I'm going to do is mirror that over and if I select that, I'm going to make sure that I have copy the original objects and join mirrored vectors selected. So if I go left, it creates a copy to the left, but it also joins them together. And I can do that again so I create four of these circles or these half circles. Now, what I'm going to do with this is to do some V-bit carving on this. Now, V-bit carving uses a closed vector and it basically tries to get the V-bit down as far as it can. So the width of the actual vector determines how far that the V-bit can actually get down. So if you've got a smaller section, then the V-bit will only go just a little, go into the material just a little bit. If you've got a larger section, then it will go right the way down. So what I'm going to do is basically have this modulating. So I want it to go deep at the right hand end and then go quite shallow on the far left. Now the way that I can do this is just make sure that I have a varying vector when I create it. So I'm going to have a thicker vector on the right hand side compared to the left basically. So the way that I do this is use the transform tool. And what I'm going to do is grab this blue point which is the rotation point and I'm going to move that to the top left which is there. I'm going to press control on the keyboard and this will create a copy. Now if I do this whilst selecting outside of the bounding box. This will create a rotated copy. So if I select control and then go out like so, you can see that this is rotating around that point. And when I let go, this will create a copy. So if I let go there, you can see that that's created a copy. So here you can see it's shallow, so it's going to a fine point here, and it's larger at this point. So when I do the V-bit carving, it will go deeper at this end, and then be quite shallow at this end. So I just need to join this up, otherwise it won't do it. So let's create a polyline. Make sure that I select add to existing line. Don't need to draw smooth polylines. And I'm just going to snap onto the end of there, snap onto the end of here and it joins the vector up. So that's the end of the design and what I'm going to do now is to start actually machining this. Okay to see all of the toolpaths that are available within ArtCam Express if you select toolpaths under the project tree it will open up all of the toolpath operations underneath the splitter pane now here you can see all of the 2D toolpaths and the 3D toolpaths. I'm going to be using mostly 2D toolpaths to do this. So I'm going to be using the profile toolpath, the area clearance, and also the V-bit carving to do this piece. The first thing that I'm going to do is to create an area clearance toolpath. So if I select that, basically this is going to create a pocket of whatever I select. So if I select the outside of the whale, let's say for instance, 
and I'm going to give this a start depth of zero, a finish depth, let's give that a finish depth of five. I'm going to add a tool to this. Now I'm going to add the smallest tool that I have, which is a 1.5 millimeter end mill and click select. Now you'll notice that when I select that, the add button becomes grayed out. Now this is something that's only available within the advanced 2D machining module. This allows you to add multiple tools to this area clearance. So for instance, in an ideal world, I would like to use the largest tool that I have just to blast away most of the material within here and then go down to smaller tools so I can just get into the corners. But because I can only add one tool to this, I'm going to need to either create a few of these tool paths that go over the whole of the part, or I'm just going to have to use a small tool to actually get into the corners. So I'm just going to use this 1.5 millimeter end mill. And I'm going to use the tool clearance strategy of offset. Raster will just go left to right or right to left and then step over in Y and then go back across, step over. The offset will follow the contour and then offset inwards or outwards and then follow the contour again until it finishes and clears all of the material. So I'm going to click calculate now and you can see that that's created the tool path. So if I close that now and I'm going to open up the tool path, so you can see that I have this area clear. Now I'm just going to right click and rename that and I'm going to call this area clear whale body, let's call this. And if I wanted to see just what this one done before actually machining it, if I right click and simulate tool path, it will just give me a simulation of what's actually going to be machined. So that's just that one tool. Okay, so let's just turn off all of these tool paths that you can see. So I can do that by selecting the light bulbs. So let's just turn those off. Okay, so let's just delete the simulation for that. Okay, so now I'm going to create another area clearance, but this time for the eye and for the mouth. So I'm just going to zoom in there just so you can see this. I'm going to select the eye and the mouth, create an area clearance toolpath, and the start depth on this needs to be five millimeters because I've already machined away this inside of the whale down to five millimeters. So if I left this at zero, it wouldn't actually machine anything. So I need to change that to five millimeters. The finish depth, let's do this at six. So it just goes one millimeter deep. It's just a little bit of detail. I'm going to add a tool to this. Let's use the smallest one that I have, the 1.5 millimeter and click select and use the offset strategy again and I'm just going to click calculate now. Now if you take a look at this, let me just rename this to the area clear eye and mouth and I'm going to simulate this toolpath here and I'm going to simulate the toolpath for the eye and the mouth. Now you can see that it's not actually machined the mouth. Now that's because the tool won't actually get into the move. So if I turn on the vectors, let's just turn off the tool paths. Let's just zoom in on the move. Now, how wide is that move? Let's use the measure tool. And what I'm going to do is just snap to the edge there, snap to there, take a look at the distance. You can see that it's 1.325 millimeters. So obviously the 1.5 millimeter M mill won't actually machine in there. So what I'm going to do to sort this out is to just offset this and make it a little bit larger. So if I go to the offset and let's just make it a little bit larger, let's say like so. I can close that, let's just delete this original one. Let's just measure this again just to be sure. So here you can see that this is 2.5 millimeters. So I know that the 1.5 is going to get 
in there now. So what I can do is just close that and I'm going to edit the toolpath, shift select the new vector and then select calculate. And this will update the toolpath that's already in there. And you can see that it's actually machined something now. So if I simulate just this one toolpath now, you can see that it's machined the May for me as well now. So there you can see my whale finished. So let's turn on the vectors as like so. And what I'd like to do is to create a nice edge around this whale. As you can see, it's just a pocket at the moment. So what I want to do is create a nice beveled edge or a nice chamfered edge. And I can do that by selecting the vector. And instead of selecting create a V bit carving toolpath, I'm going to use a profile toolpath. And I'm going to make sure that I do this profile along the vector line so it actually follows this vector line and I can just set this to a depth and I'm just going to use the v-bit tool set to a depth and it will give me a chamfer so if I set this to a depth of let's say two millimeters select a profiling tool let's use this 32 millimeter 90 degree v-bit and then select calculate now let's just turn off the toolpaths. I'm going to rename this to profile whale edge and then just simulate this toolpath. So you can see that it's given me this chamfer around the edge of the whale. Now I'm going to create a few of these chamfered profiles so let's take a plan view of this and let's turn on the vectors and what I'm going to do is do a chamfered profile on the inside of this rectangle so let's do a profile and let's set that to a long let's give it a little bit more depth for this one let's say five millimeters Select the same profiling tool, so 32 millimeter 90 degree V bit, and then select calculate now. So if I just rename this to profile inner chamfer, let's say, and then simulate this toolpath, you can see that it gives me this chamfer along the vector. Let's create another one for the outside. So another profile toolpath. Again, select a lung. Now I need to do this quite shallow. I can't go too deep with this because you can see that this chamfer is quite close to the edge. So let me just rotate that around. Let's do this, let's say one millimeter deep. Select the same tool again. and calculate now. I'm going to call this profile outer chamfer, just so I know what everything is because I have a lot of toolpaths here. And I'm going to simulate this toolpath. You can see that it gives me this chamfer. It's quite shallow chamfer on the outside. Okay, let's take a plan view then. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is create the waves down here. And I'm going to, again, use a V-bit to do this, but this time I'm going to use V-bit carving. Now with V-bit carving, it tries to get down as far as it can in between the closed vector. Now because there's a larger gap on the right-hand side here, the V-bit's going to get down quite far compared to the left-hand side where there's a much smaller gap. So this will give the effect of basically going from deep up to shallow. Okay, so if I select the V-bit carving toolpath, and I'm going to select carving tool, let's use exactly the same tool. And here I have the maximum width and maximum depth of cut. 
Now, if I select that, it will tell me how deep this V bit is going to actually get. So I can just check this just to make sure that it doesn't actually go too deep and it doesn't cut out the bottom of the material going to the bed, for instance. So 2.27, my material's 25 millimeters. That's fine. Click calculate now. And then let's rename that to VBIT carving, let's say waves. And then I can turn off the tool paths. Let's simulate this one. And you can see that it's gone from deep coming across to shallow. So it gives this effect of basically this 3D sort of effect. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just cut parts of this out. So I need to obviously cut the middle out and then go around the outside. So let's cut the middle out first. So if I select the inside rectangle and I'm going to choose a profile toolpath. Now, importantly, I need to select inside for this because I want the profile to be inside this vector. The finish depth is set automatically to the depth that I want to cut the part out at 25 millimeters. It's the same depth as my material that I set up. The profiling tool, now I'm going to use, let's say a six millimeter end mill for this. Click select. Now obviously you would have a radius in the corners from whatever tool that you were to use. So if you don't want to have any rants in the corners, you need to use a smaller diameter tool. So just going to use six millimeter for this. Click calculate now. You can see that it's created the tool paths there in red. So let's just rename this to profile cutout. Uh, let's put inside. Let's turn off the tool paths. I can simulate this one tool path, like so. You can see that it's gone right the way through, cut out the inside, left me with this nice chamfer on the inside here. I'm going to do another profile cut just to go along the outside. Now, I don't need to particularly do this because my material is bang on size. Now, if you put a block on the router that was let's say 405 by 320 for instance so it's a little bit larger you would have to do this because you need to get it to the right size so i'm just going to do this just for argument's sake so let's create a profile toolpath finish depth of 25 let's turn on the vectors select the outside and I'm going to use let's say the same six millimeter end mill Make sure that it's set, the profile is set to outside. Click calculate now. And then I can rename that to cut out outside. And then let's just simulate that tool path. So there you can see the finished piece. Now what I need to do is get rid of this inside because I don't need that. So if I go to the simulation, and then I select delete waste material and I'm going to delete the picked material. So let's just delete that. And now you can see that it's left me with my frame. Okay, so what I'm going to do with this is just change the material of this. So let's change the material, let's say to pewter, select apply. And then I can change all of the features that I've machined, the color for those as well by adding depth color. So if I select apply, you can see that that changes the color to black, which is the primary color here. Let's change that to this turquoise color. And you can see that that's changed the color there. So there you can see my finished frame. All that I need to do now is to send this to my CNC so I can actually machine this. Now the way that I can do that is to select tool paths and then go to save tool paths. And then you'll see all of the tool paths that I have created on the right hand side here. Now, if you had a tool changer, 
all that you would need to do is to make sure that the tool number corresponded with the tools that you had in the correct holders within the tool changer. Now, because most people don't have the tool changer, I'm just going to do this with a single headed machine. And what I need to do is select save tool paths to separate files. So each one of these tool paths is going to be saved to a different file. I can also append toolpath details to the file name. So it basically adds all of these details to the file name when I output it so I know what they are. Okay, so let's select browse and I'm going to go to the desktop and let's find my children's frame and I'm going to call this frame, select open and it's going to save into that folder as the file name frame. Now the machine file format, these are called post processors. And we have well over 200 post processors within ArtCam, all of the versions of ArtCam, even the basic version of ArtCam Express. And most of the machine manufacturers are listed here. We also have a genetic G code post which is here. Now basically what these do is convert all of the data that's tool paths within ArtCam into a language that your machine will understand and it will go to basically go to these coordinates so it machines the part. So if I select G code arcs and then select save I can then close that open up the folder and you can see that I've got all of these files here and you can see that they've got basically the file names on there so for instance toolpath one area clear whale body with an M mil 1.5 millimeter so if I double click on that they're all text files and they can be opened and you can see all of the coordinates and you can see what's going on and these are ready to be sent to your machine then and these will make your machine move and cut the parts out so i hope that you found this demonstration useful thank you for watching and i'll see you on the next one goodbye